So I'm just starting the roof framing here. Um, I got most of the outside sheeting done, but I ran out of uh, two inch nails. So I'm gonna switch over and try to do what I can on the roof, although I'm gonna have to go to the sawmill shortly. Um, anyway, I had kind of a, not really an epiphany, but just kind of a, one of those things that rings a bell and you're like, oh, duh, that makes perfect sense. So the footprint of this shed is six by six. So the exterior of the top of the walls is six foot by six foot. I decided when I was planning it that I wanted to have a one foot overhang. So that means that these beams here that are gonna stick out to make my gables are eight feet long. Well, I went to measure corner to corner to make sure it's squared. And what do you know, <laughs> I get 120 inches, which of course is 10 feet. Let me get that hooked over there. Come out here. Booyah! It's a hair off. I need to fudge it just a little bit one way or the other. But within an eighth, it is square. But what I was actually laughing about was the, the 6, 8, 10 combo there because when you're in school, for anybody that's taken trig or studied just the most beginner basic trig and learned about triangles, obviously, there's the 3, 4, 5 triangle that, that comes up. Um, which of course you go through your whole Pythagorean theorem, blah, 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 nerdy engineer stuff. But anyway, three, four, five triangle. I've used that a lot before, just in general drawing and planning, just cause it's an easy way to work. And I didn't even realize it, but I did it in the shed because you have three, four, five, you would also have six, eight, 10. I don't know, would you have nine, 12, 15, I guess? Maybe that works. I care if it's, yeah, I guess it's doubles, not squares. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. I just thought it was funny. Um, starting on this roof framing and realized I accidentally made up a 6810 triangle. But that makes things really easy. Okay, so we've started putting up the I don't know, call them the, the beams really, they're just two by fours, but basically, yeah, the, the ridge beam and uh, these two lower eave beams, I don't know the right term for them. Um, but this is how I'm gonna build out my, my gables. You know, I, <coughs> I struggled with it a lot on the goat barn, just cause I didn't really think it through or understand it. Um, and so on the goat barn, I actually didn't stick the initial beams out like, well, I guess the ridge beam I did. Um, but then I did some sort of stupid nonsense where I extended the purlins an inch and a half further and then tried to nail the fascia board back underneath. I don't really know. I don't remember, but it was dumb and it was a pain. It didn't work well, but this, this is easy. Um, this way my rafters, you know, since I've got the beam down here at the bottom, yeah, that's what I did. So I put the roof on, on the goat barn, um, with the rafters. And then I came back and basically added the outermost, what would be your, again, your uh, your soffit board or your fascia board in the gable. I added that after I had already put all the other rafters on and the purlins on. And so I had this, I had ran basically the same as this beam, but it was down nailed to the wall. Um, and so it made kind of squaring out the, the uh, eaves and everything really annoying. Anyway, this should work a lot better because my rafter is going to come right down on top of this. This beam right here from the ridge will come right down to it, so everything will be very well supported. I won't have to worry about anything really sagging. And then my purlins will just run out flush to the face of the that outermost rafter. So I'm fixing to start cutting rafters and trying to get them up there right now. But I wanted to show you, you guys know I do a lot of this stuff alone, despite having a very, uh, very intelligent, very helpful wife. It's just not her thing, so. Oh, so I was gonna show you my little blocking here. So for my vertical posts that support the ridge, Put a little piece of blocking in here and that's so that when I fire with a nail gun this board doesn't move so two nails in there then two nails through there to hold it this one was a little bit trickier because I've got to have a rafter that comes up here and then um, there's also a board that'll come down horizontal here for a nailer plate um, I don't think there's one on this side I hope if so I can tear that blocking out there's just one nail holding it in uh, but I, I measured the rafter uh, end to end centered it up first you can see my mark and then I put this little piece of blocking on here and it was just enough to hold so when I fired the first nail from the outside in, it didn't kick this vertical support over or move the, 
the rafters. So everything's all still lined up square like it needs to be. I can tear this back out if I want it because I put a few more toenails in since I put the outside one on. There's really not a whole lot that holds this ridge beam to this blocking other than the weight of the roof itself. And then of course, as you start putting up rafters, that'll tie it all together. So there's just a couple little toenails in there for now. That's all it really needs. Anyway, just wanted to show you that blocking is your friend. I've done a lot of blocking around in here. You can see all sorts of little blockings nailed on the bottom from the siding. And uh, this is all blocking that I put in, basically an extra stud put in to be uh, a nail support when I put it in my, well, my inside siding and trim and everything. So yeah, that's the plan. Let's keep it rolling on these rafters. So <clears throat> I'm cutting the rafters and I thought this was worth a mention anyway. Again, not rocket science, but uh, I wanted to show how I've got my saw set up. So I, you know, figured out what all the rafters are supposed to be and sketched them out in my book here. So I know exactly how to cut them. And so you, you know, you obviously you want to try to replicate all the cuts for efficiency. You want to try to do all of one cut at a time. So what I'm doing right now is, you know, it's supposed to be a three one pitch. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I made it 14 degrees because I was drawing it on software. Um, I should have left it as a true 3-1 pitch, but it, everything works out okay. That's the reason why I've got these little squigglies. This is, this is actually um, like one foot and you know, it says approximately one foot. If you take it to the 64th, it says it's like one foot 63-64. So it's really, it's right there. Um, but my tape major is in 16th, so I left it 16th. Anyway, I've got the saw set up on that 14 degree cut. So the top and bottom of the rafters is 14 degrees. Um, so here I'm going to take off, you know, enough that I've got a good relatively square shoulder. That's scrap unless I need some blocking. And then I've got my, my stop on my stand here already set for the four foot one and a quarter length that each rafter is so just i don't want to slam it down there because then i'll bump that out this little clamp doesn't really hold it very tight so we just want to make sure that we're just touching on it yep and then get our other cut there we go so i'm going through cranking them out now i'm using up all the shortest boards i can find they're four foot one and a quarter so anything that's four foot two actually it's got to be like four foot four because of the angle um, is getting cut. I've got to make 14 of them, so I gotta get busy. Okay, well, I just finished up cutting the notch for the last rafter. There's the rest of them all looking pretty. And I did test fit the first one that I cut. Perfect fit, so I'm super thrilled about that. But I wanted to show you guys a couple of the other kind of tricks, or if nothing else, the, the creature comforts of this saw. And I'll be honest with you, I've owned this saw for like five years. But it's in a DeWalt. DS 780 or something like that. Look at that, DWS 780. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to show you was one of the two of the two of the tricks that I used. I showed you how I, you know, set my 14 degree miter and then set my rip fence, which I was using that end. We lost one of our deals, so I had to move it. But anyway, I showed you how I was using the fence so I could cut them all 14 degrees, all the same length. Now to cut the notch, what I did was. I set this, it's got this little stop adjuster here. You flip this little tab down and you can thread this <laughs> stop in or out to, it's a, it's a depth limiter. So when you come down with the saw, you can't come any further. So I set that depth limiter so that I would get my 3 8 inch uh, depth that I needed for the notch. Um, and you'll notice I'm also on a 14 degree bevel because that matches the 14 degree here so that when this is installed at an angle on the barn, you see our notch base there is vertical to go against the sill plate or the beam. So two of those, two little tricks there, your, your depth limiter and your bevel, of course. This one, um, it's got, it's got a, a quick set here that lets it default to only beveling to one direction. It's a dual bevel miter saw, but it has that little quick snap. Um, I guess so in general, you would only bevel so forever using the saw, I've always just beveled to the left and made it work. But I finally tinkered around and figured that out because I knew it could go both ways. Uh, the, the last thing was uh, setting you a stop block back here behind. And that's not really for this saw, but that's just so that when the, when the saw comes down, 
you're catching the very bottom flat edge of the saw so you're not cutting a whole lot more than you need to and then you can just work in and out with it just back and forth just a little bit to get you a good flat um, bottom cut and not have you know a taper which since we're coming up high anyway that would be a lot worse you know as you get obviously you guys know this as you get further down you catch more of that leading edge of the blade anyway just wanted to mention that because again not that i'm a, a, a master skilled craftsman or anything but i found it kind of amusing that i've owned this all this long and i've never actually um uh played around with it to find those settings i knew they were there and you know today having them came in real useful so i was able to cut my my 3 8 plunge here for my notch and then i just measured out um you know to, to draw my line for this inch and a half wide this is where it actually sits on top of that that inch and a half beam right there. I was trying to use my speed square, but I don't know. I, I can't figure out how to use it to actually trace this line. I don't know if there's an application for it or not. I thought there was, but I think with a true framing square that's a lot longer and can get you to the end of your board, I think there's an application, but I don't really know. I have to ask a real framer about that, uh, somebody that knows. But anyway, the rafters are all cut. Woohoo! Look at that. Rafters are cut notched it's lunchtime after lunch we're gonna get all the rafters on we've got a whole batch of purlins already cut sitting on the sawmill all i gotta do is throw them on here cut them eight feet long we're gonna get the purlins up today we might even see if we got any metal start putting metal on today but i don't think we have enough metal or screws but we'll see all right well just got the first two rafters up this one's not even nailed on the bottom yet now there's the other one but i got the ridge up i just wanted to show oh hey wait what's what's that but it's not, yeah, what's that? Okay, so what that is, is me being a dummy, and that is the difference between the real world and your computer model. So what happened was I had drawn this whole thing out. Excuse me, I'm taking stuff down off the ladder here. I'd drawn the whole thing out at, you know, six by six feet on Google SketchUp. And then of course, when I built it, yes, it's all square plumb and level, but it's six and a quarter, not six feet, one quarter inch, I'm sorry six feet one quarter inch not six by six exactly well i went upstairs looked at the computer and used those dimensions to draw out my little sketch in the notebook that i showed you uh and then went ahead and banged out 14 rafters oh but look they don't quite fit right so when i went up there i had a gap about a half inch on this side after i put the right hand side up went to put the left hand side up there's a big gap more than just like oh it's a little out of square and then it dawned on me okay now i know what i did so my wife, thankfully, I mentioned earlier, you know, she's super smart. She happened to be standing there and I was like, look what I did. And she said, oh, well, why don't you just flip that rafter over and cut a new notch where it needs to be? So the result is that this gable or this eave here will be just a hair uh, narrower than that one. Um, but, you know, I've told you guys, so now you know, otherwise you'd never know. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go, I cut that one if it's good. So I'm going to go cut six more. So the roof will be just a hair off center. So up until now, it was all perfect. Now it's a little out of perfect, but it's still really good. I'm happy with it. All right, so all the rafters are up. And this is the part where I tell you guys that I screwed up. They're just a little bit out of square. It was 108 and three quarter from the corner of that rafter to the up here to the outside of the ridge beam. Um, corner to corner is 108 and three quarter and when I measured this this one across the corner it was 108 and a quarter so it was a half inch out I brought the end of this rafter out just a little bit to fix it but it got me wondering you know what happened why wasn't it square in the first place and so what I should have done was see when I put up this this eave beam here I measured you know right here on the end to the wall and from that end to the wall and centered it up that way and I did the same thing with my ridge but what i should have done actually was when i went to set the ridge before i nailed it i should have gone corner to corner from the rafter beam or from the from the eave beam that i'm calling it up to that. i should have done corner to corner then to make sure that the ridge beam was square with this uh what i'm calling the eave beam here because they're both exactly eight feet long so they should you know it should be square square um but yeah, one of them, and I don't know which one, is shifted just slightly out um, with respect to the other. I guess you would say the ridge beam is probably just a little bit this way. Um, 
in order to make that dimension longer. On the opposite side, I was out a quarter inch. And so again, I just fudged the rafter a little bit over there. But what I should have done, like I said, was I should have set this first eave beam. Then I should have placed, I should have dry fit the ridge beam, gone corner to corner to square it up, nailed it. Then I should have come down here and did this eave beam and gone corner to corner to square that one up as well. So they're, they're all off just a hair. But again, so much better than the goat barn that I can't really complain. Next up, we're going to go over to the sawmill. We've already got the boards ready for us. Get all our purlins cut, and that'll be done with the all the uh, primary framing. I was going to put, I got to do a, a bunch of little blocking and stuff like that still to kind of tie it all together. Do a bunch of blocking out here on the eaves and such. But the, the main framing, the rafters, the purlins, all that will all be on. And then it'll just be blocking left to do. All right. We got all the rafters and purlins up. I think I mentioned on the rafters, um, they were a little out of square. So you can see right here, you can see this notch sticks over just a little bit. But I did square the roof deck. So um, putting the purlins on, I just came down from the ridge, boom, 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 12 inch on center. And then when I got to the last board, I was able to shift it back and forth a little bit and in and out a little bit as needed to square the roof deck. So at least when I'm cutting my sheet metal, that should be mostly square. Now there is gonna be a big piece of sloppy um, rake trim that goes over there, a metal trim. So it doesn't really matter if your roof metal is very square at all. There's a lot of slop in it. But having a square roof deck will just help um, with the simplicity of installing the metal roof anyway. So anyway, I've got to get a metal trim. As far as framing, I've got to get a piece of fascia that goes across here and a piece of fascia that goes up here. And then we're ready to put our metal on. Um, we're just going to do this just three quarter inch thick by five and a half tall. So it sticks down past the tip of the rafters a little bit. Um, and then it will be, uh, it'll stick down, so you'll, you'll have your, your fascia board will be flat, it'll be a half inch thick, and then you'll have a piece of one by, like a one by two or one by one that's three quarter thick, and that'll still leave you about three quarters of an inch to the bottom of your fascia, so you should still have a good drip edge all the way around. So that's the plan, but I think I'm gonna call it with this little clip here. I think that'll be enough talking about rafters and purlins to put you all to sleep, but just take you up here and get one more good look even though it looks just the same. Can't say it enough. I am super happy with the way this one's going compared to the goat barn. All right. Got the fascia on. Let's hope it holds. I nailed the crap out of it because on the goat barn, it wanted to warp quite a bit. I'm debating screwing it in still, but I did saw this an inch thick Whereas the goat barn was three quarter or seven eighths, which isn't a huge difference. Uh, but I did saw it an inch thick and I just nailed the ever living crap out of it. Especially along the bottom edge. So you see nails right along. I tried to keep them as low as I could to where they still hit that rafter behind without punching through. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they punched through the rafter. I'm saying punching through below. Uh, and then tack nail right into the end, put three nails right there as well to help tie it. But that's where on the goat barn, this bottom corner of that gable fascia twisted out. So hopefully that won't happen again, but I'm gonna keep a close eye on it um, over the next week or so and see if it starts to wanna to twist. I'll just put some screws in it. If it twists and then you, and, and gets in that position and then you try to screw it back in, it's really hard to wanna to pull it back straight. It wants to crack or the screw wants to strip. Um, but yeah. Might run along the top edge of this one here and put a few more screws in, but it's nailed real tight along the base too. The corners are, mo are what concern me the most, but yeah, face is up. Uh, I gotta go see what I've got for metal trim and see if I can't get any roofing on, but I don't think I can. I would love to, but I just don't think I got enough stuff.